Hi guys! In this video I will explain you how I made this small PCB. This PCB measures 100 x 100 mm and it consists of 16 smaller breakout boards. And uh, this board has all the parts assembled. And here on the back side you see some pin headers. And we can just have a look here on the raw PCB itself. So it's very easy to split the PCB apart. There's some V-cut lines here. So if I want this small prototype area here, I just break the PCBs apart. And it's very easy. This is just a one millimeter PCB. And here we have the smaller PCB. So let's have a look in KiCad and see how this design was done. So here we have the design opened in KiK8. Let's have a look on the schematic. And uh, to make everything a bit more clear, I have divided the schematic into 16 small blocks uh, where we have each design in, in each block. So let's start with the USB-C connector or the USB-C breakout board. Uh, here we have a standard USB-C connector and a six pin pin header and a six pin screw terminal. And you see that the USB-C port is configured as a device that can maximum deliver uh, three amps using these uh, 5K1 resistors. Then we have an RJ12 breakout. This is just the RJ12 connector connected to a six pin pin header. Then we have a breakout board for an LDO. This is a standard TLV1117 LDO and you can choose whichever or whatever LDO you need. In this example, I have a 3.3 volt LDO and there's an LED indicating that the power is on. Here we have a breakout board for the quick connector. This is just a quick connector straight through and then it's broken out into this uh, pin header where we can measure the signals. There's also a small bypass capacitor added. Then we have a USB-A breakout board and uh, the USB-A connector is connected to a 4-pin screw terminal. Then we have a breakout board with 8 LEDs and of course you can choose whatever um, resistor you need and which color you need. Then we have a small prototype area and uh, I can just show you that in the PCB how that is done. Then we have a small text breakout board. This is just two switches that are connected to two six pin pin headers. Then we have a breakout board for two trimmers. And of course you can also choose whatever values you need for your trimmers here. Then we have a breakout board for an SOH package and just connect it to two four pin pin headers. Then we have a groove breakout board as you know like the quick connector then we have one for the groove boards yeah. and uh, here we have a breakout board for an SO16 package. Quite simple. Here we have a breakout board for RGB LEDs, programmable RGB LEDs. So we have the input signal here on pin 2 on J1 and uh, we can put more of these boards in series and uh, the output signal is available here on J10 pin 2. Then we have a breakout board for a logic level uh, converter. So it will take like for example 3.3 volt and convert that to a 5 volt logic signal. And uh, the low voltage is available here on this six pin pin header and the high voltage is available here on this six pin pin header. One nice feature with the uh, KiCad 8 is that the power symbol is um, you can actually uh, rename them now. You, that was not possible in the prior version uh, KiCad 7. So if we add a power uh, symbol here we can just take one. Uh, let's take a signal called uh, one volt for example and uh, then we can actually rename that to LV 
just type db here like that and then we can move that a bit closer here and instead of that label then we can just move this one here so this is a very nice feature uh, that i was missing here in uh, in KiCad 7 but it's available now in KiCad 8 so the um, design here is just uh, made by two pull-up resistors and a mosfet and uh, this is available then on four channels and uh, here we have a dc plug to a screw terminal this is also a very simple design and here we have a chip that makes the logic level on four signals um, the good thing about this txp 0104 is that uh, the signal speed can go up to like 10 a minimum of 10 megahertz up to 100 megahertz uh, whereas the other uh, logic level translator here over here that can maybe go up to a maximum of 500 kilohertz so th there are different options available so uh, yeah let's have a look on how the pcb was done let's close this one and then open the pcb design so this video is sponsored by pcb way who offer a wide range of manufacturing services for your projects including pcbs from very low cost prototype boards to more advanced pcbs all the way up to 60 layers and also with specialist fr4 materials you can also get your rigid flex PCBs made if you want to make something a little bit more interesting. They also offer a wide range of PCB assembly options. That means getting your PCBs assembled with components on both sides of the board, whether they be surface mount or through hole parts. So don't forget to visit pcbway.com. Let's have a look on the PCB. And here you see the PCB in the PCB editor. And uh, the PCB measures 100 times uh, 100 millimeters. And um, the PCB has been divided into 16 small, smaller PCBs. And uh, I did this by making some V cut lines. So they were defined in the user one layer. And I added a small label here. And um, then I made a Gerber file of this as well. And uh, at PCBWay, I just wrote a small comment that they should uh, make a V cut uh, according to the specifications in the user one layer. So this is just a very simple two layer board and you can make it whatever thickness you want. Uh, I think I made mine in a one millimeter thick board and uh, you see I added a lot of labels so it's easier to see which signal that you are actually working on on the pin headers and here we have the small prototype area just made of some smaller uh, through hole pads and also the spacing here between the pin headers is also in a 100 mil pitch so that it all the boards will fit in a uh, breadboard and uh, wherever there was place for it I placed some 3.2 millimeter holes so that you can uh, build it into other products if you want so let's have a look on the 3d viewer And this is one of the nice features in KiCad uh, 8, I think. This looks very cool. And it gives a good idea if you have every detail in place. And just a view of the backside. And of course, these uh, pin headers, you can place them on the side that you need them on if you need them to be used on a breadboard you will have to uh, solder them to the opposite side and we can just try to render this board and where was that
think I need a faster computer. Like that. That's awesome. Okay, let's have a look on the PCB in real life and try to break some of the boards out of the whole PCB. So here's the finished board. It was produced by PCB way and as you see the quality of this is quite good. So uh, let's try and break the PCB apart. It should be very easy. It's just a one millimeter PCB. And here there's just a small PCB with a power socket. And then we have the power available here on the screw terminal. Another example could be this USB-C connector. Here we have USB-C into a screw terminal and here you can see the labels of each signal. And it's just then plugging in your USB-C cable. Yeah, and another one here, this is USB-A. I think I have a cable over here. This way. Like that. Very simple. And um, the spacing here in between, they are on a 100 millimeter grid, so it should be possible to put a PCB like this on a breadboard. Just like that. And then we have access to the LEDs. It's very difficult to normally, yeah, solar wires onto this, so it's much easier to do it like this. So you see a lot of different uh, small PCBs to play around with. This is just some of the bots that I find useful. You're very welcome to give me feedback in the comments and please let me know if you have other suggestions for new breakout bots. Then I'll try to make another video on this topic. See you in the next one. Bye.